So number three, based on your outline, search for credible sources of information and read them carefully. You may consult books, research articles, reports, theses or websites. Make sure that the websites you consult have authentic and verifiable information. You must not go to any and every website. Okay? So you first make an outline, make a plan and then look for information so that you can support those ideas that you have. Number four, make notes while reading. It's very important that we make notes because we might read a lot, but we can't remember everything. Writing is very important. Okay, so as you read, whatever important points you find out, you put them down in writing. Next, understand organizational patterns of text. For instance, an argumentative essay needs to have a clear position on an issue supported by evidence and arguments. So if you're writing an argumentative essay, you have to stick to one point and make it very clear with enough evidence. You can't just go here and there talk about many things. So you have to be focused. This is your argument. So you write, write only about that point. Okay, and very clearly with all the support that you need to make your point. An email has to have a clear subject line and convey the message as briefly as possible. So emails can't be like essays. They have to be brief, precise, okay, short and complete and clear. All right, it has to have a clear subject line. This is important because when you're looking for emails, you look for the subject line, okay, so that you can look at the subject and find what you're looking for. If you don't write a subject at all in the subject line, then you can't find that easily, okay, so it's important. Write a precise subject line in the email. It cannot be like an essay, okay, it has to be brief. Emails are short and precise short and clear. Number six, write the first draft based on your readings. What's a first draft? The first draft is the first piece of your writing. When you finish everything that you want to write, whatever you have finished is your first draft. It is not the final one that you're going to summon. Please remember, there will always be scope for improvement. All right. So write the first draft based on your readings. And remember, it's just a draft. It is the first draft. That means you will have to write more drafts. Okay. Next, read your draft carefully. Make sure you have included all main points. So always compare it with your outline, the plan that you had at the beginning. Okay. Check if you have included all the main points. Your first goal is to achieve content accuracy. That means you don't look at your language here. You look at the content, all the information that you wanted to put in there. Check if all those things are there. Don't look for grammar. Don't look for vocabulary. Just look for the content. Okay. Next, edit your text for redundancy. What is redundancy? Redundancy is things that are not necessary. Okay, or when you're saying the same thing in two different ways. So edit your text, check if there's any redundancy and remove it. Unnecessary jargon. Look for unnecessary jargon. Now, jargon means technical words. Okay, not everybody understands all the technical terms that you know. Okay, so try to avoid unnecessary jargon. That means there is necessary jargon and unnecessary jargon. Don't try to complicate things. Don't try to show up that you know a lot. Okay, 
stick to your plan stick to the aim of your writing all right include only the jargon that is necessary what is not required do not add because it might confuse the reader vague expressions what are vague expressions unclear expressions don't i mean you remove those things when you're editing you get rid of vague expressions be very clear specific okay and also take care of grammatical inaccuracies so first you looked at the content and then you look for all these errors if there's any grammatical error or inaccuracy you get rid of it or rectify it right next combine short sentences into compound and complex sentences you can't have a piece of writing with all short sentences okay it doesn't give the give a picture of a good writer okay there must be some compound and complex sentences it shows that you know you can write well it is possible that you know how to write compound and complex sentences but you don't use them you just keep making short sentences such a piece of writing is not very interesting okay and it doesn't even give a very good image of your writing ability so this is the time you have drafts right so you check first you look for the content then you look for the errors and then look at the sentences how you uh made the sentences try and make compound sentences and complex sentences <clears throat> ensure variety in length and type of sentences okay all should be not very long sentences you can't have one paragraph which is formed with one sentence no okay so think and write it should be interesting and not complicated for the reader right next proofread your text for typos what are typos typing errors okay sometimes we have the right idea but we type something else okay that is possible or some errors some spelling errors yes we know the spelling but we might type it wrong because we may not be very good at typing even if you are good at typing sometimes errors can happen okay so proofread your text for typos and punctuation errors do not depend on grammar and spell check because it is a computer it can't identify every error there are certain things it cannot so it's very important that you give it to a person who is better at english than you are okay so that they can help you with it don't feel bad to give it to somebody okay give it to some reliable person okay and ask them to proofread it so that you can rectify the errors because when we write something it is likely that we overlook our errors it is natural okay sometimes we can't see our errors because while we are reading we read a sentence not only from the piece of paper that we written on but also in our mind when we start a sentence we finish it ourselves we don't read the whole thing sometimes because we written them all those sentences so it is possible that you can't see some errors that you com uh, committed so it is very important that you give for proofreading next read the full text once before finalizing it yes don't just look at parts separately no once you've done all the parts of your text go through the whole thing once again you can ask for feedback from teachers and or friends if possible okay it's important that you look at the whole text once so that you know there's a logical flow of ideas you can't uh, have a piece of writing where everything is very smart okay separate things are smartly written but when you put them together they are confusing no okay so check your writing once so that you can ensure that everything is easy to understand there's a logical flow okay now let's look at task 24 task 24 this paragraph has 10 errors related to vocabulary 
grammar and punctuation. Identify the mistakes and rewrite the paragraph. March 20th, celebrated as the World Sparrow Day since 2010. There's an error here. It has to be March 20th has been celebrated as the World Sparrow Day since 2010. The aim is to generate awareness about sparrows, which were once very common in our surroundings, but now they are rare. We need a comma after surroundings, either a comma or an M dash, the longest dash that we have. You can have it here because it is giving a statement and then something contrary to that. Till a few years back, it's not till, it is until, U-N-T-I-L. Until a few years ago, sparrows could be seen in their nests. Okay, please add these words. Sparrows could be seen in their nests in almost every backyard and public places such as bus and railway stations. The sparrows stayed in large colonies and survived over food grains and tiny worms and had a close relation with human beings. Now, it's hard to believe that this tiny humble sparrow is in danger of disappearing dramatically. You need to add an apostrophe after it. Now, it's hard because it's a contraction of it is, okay? It apostrophe. Yes. What is causing distress to the humble sparrow? Experts note, not notes. Experts note that the changing human landscape in the, is the main culprit. Modification in house designs in both rural and urban areas. Okay, it's not area, areas. From a rise of skyscrapers, wild towers, and increased pollution have made it difficult for sparrows to survive. Right? It's not for surviving, it is to survive. Let's look at the paragraph again to see if all errors have been identified. I think I missed one. Okay, let's look at the paragraph again. March 20th has been celebrated as the World Sparrow Day since 2010. That is one error. The aim is to generate awareness about sparrows, which were once very common in our surroundings, comma or M dash, but now they are rare. Until a few years ago, it is better to use ago than back, okay? Until, instead of till. Until a few years ago, sparrows could be seen in their nests, in almost every backyard. And if you want to put an in, you can add it here or without in also, it is correct. And public places such as bus and railway stations. The sparrows stayed in large colonies and survived over food grains, it is not over, it is on. Okay, I think I missed it last time. Survived on food grains and tiny worms and had a close relation with human beings. Now it's hard, it apostrophe s. Now it's hard to believe that this tiny humble sparrow is in danger of disappearing dramatically. What is causing distress to the humble sparrow? Experts note, not note, note that the changing human landscape is the main culprit. Modification in house designs in both rural and urban areas, not area, areas, rise of skyscrapers, mobile towers, 
and increased pollution have made it difficult for sparrows to survive. Let's do task 25. Delete redundant portions and make these sentences as brief as possible. An example has been done for you. Please pause the video, do the exercise, and then we will discuss the answers. Number one is done for us. Let's look at two. The government is of the view that the petroleum prices cannot be reconsidered at this moment as it would be a counterintuitive reaction to the current global conditions. We could shorten it. We could say the government cannot change petroleum prices due to current global conditions. This is one way of writing it, making it brief. Okay, there could be others, but this is what I got. Okay, let's look at number three. It cannot be denied completely that the player was not thinking of taking a decision regarding his retirement. We could say the player was thinking of retiring. Yeah. Now what are we doing here? We are removing the redundant portions. What are redundant portions? Unnecessary words. Okay, so we are removing unnecessary words and making the sentences brief. Let's look at number four and five. Let's look at four. We will meet tomorrow in the morning. The timing would be 11 a.m. We will meet in the conference room. The meeting will be brief. It will be for just 10 minutes. To so make it brief, make it say, we will meet tomorrow at 11 a.m. in the conference room for just 10 minutes. Okay, that's brief. Number five, it is the responsibility of the project leader that all team members work in a dedicated fashion on the project and ensure the completion of the work in a timely manner. We could say, the project leader has to ensure that the team members complete the work in time. Now, let's move on to paragraph writing. <clears throat> 